Hello, we're going to look at surface area today of rectangular prisms and cubes. So surface area basically is the area on the surface. Not too helpful is that definition, no. Um, basically, if you wanted to paint a solid, how much paint would it take to cover it? Think about the outside and the part that you would need to cover. You're not talking about filling that solid up. You're talking about just covering the outside surface area. That's what surface area is. Um, thinking of it as painting is kind of a good way, um, a good way to kind of do that. And since a, a picture is worth a thousand words, here is an example of surface area. Everything that you see that is green, all right, not the inside of the box, but just the outside of the box. Now, we are going to calculate the surface area of rectangular prisms and cubes. And to do that, you can do it in two ways. One is to draw a net. Now, what a net is, is when you take a rectangular prism like this, for example, and you draw out basically all of the surfaces. So if I were to take this, um, like if I had this on a piece of paper or something, I could fold it on these lines and it would make this rectangular prism. All right. So that's basically what this is. It's a, a net is a way to show us all the surface area in a flat way. So you can draw a net and then calculate. Usually with a net, you just go ahead and pick um, one of the large rectangles. So, for example, if I were looking at this one, I would probably take the area of this, the one that I have there in yellow. Here, I'll make it a little thicker. I would find the area of maybe that rectangle there, okay, and then find the area of this rectangle here and multiply that times two because there's two of them, okay. So, if you're drawing a net, you can usually find quicker, you know, quick ways to to find the area or the surface area and pick large sections and kind of solve them. All right. The other way for rectangular prisms and cubes is to use an equation. Now, the advantage to using a net, drawing out a net, is that you can use it for any type of shape and you don't have to memorize any equations. The advantage to the equation is that it's, it's easier to use an equation. <laughs> so. Um, Here's the equation for finding the surface area of this rectangular prism. You can see there it's 2 times the length times the height. L and H is length and height. 2 times the height times the width, height, width, and 2 times the length times the width. Basically what you're doing is you're finding the area of each side and then multiplying it times 2. So you find the area here of the length times the width and you multiply it times 2 because it's in the front and also in the back. You find the area of the top and you multiply it times 2 because it's in the top and the bottom. You find the area of the side and you multiply it times 2 because it's on the left and also on the right. All right, so that's the reasoning behind this 2 times the length times the width, 2 times the height times the width, 2 times the length times the width, or, yeah. Um, because you're finding the surface area of each of these rectangles and then you're multiplying them times 2 because there's two sides that will match. All right, let's go ahead and actually use this equation to find the surface area. So here we have a rectangular prism. We're given the length with height. And what we'll do is we're going to substitute those values into this equation. Now, the height is usually pretty obvious because it's how tall the, the rectangular prism is. As far as length and width, some people say the length is the longer. Some people say the width is the shorter length, um, the shorter measurement. Other people will say, well, it's always, this will always be the length and this will always be the width. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So pick one of these two to be your length and one of them to be your width. In this case, I picked three to be my length. All right? So three is my length. That means everywhere I see the length, I'm going to plug in the value of three. And width would then be two. So everywhere I plug in or see the W, I'm going to plug in the value of two. It's important to be consistent. It doesn't matter if you had switched the length to being 2 and the width to being 3. That's fine as long as you're consistent when you um, put those values in. Height is usually pretty straightforward. All right. So I plug all those values in. 2 times 3 times 5 is 30. 2 times 5 times 2 is 20. 2 times 3 times 2 is 12. And then I add them together. 30 plus 20 plus 12 is 62. Now. 
Because this is surface area, we're measuring in square meters, so I'm going to give that units at the end. So my final answer is that the surface area of this rectangular prism is 62 square meters. All right. Again, that equation is really helpful, and length and width often throw people off. So just be consistent. Pick whichever one you want. It really, you'll get exactly the same answer. All right. Finding the surface area of a cube. A cube is kind of like a rectangular prism, only all length sides are the same length. So you can use the surface area of a rectangular prism, and we'll see. You'll see in just a moment um, that this would lead to a lot of repetition. But I'm going to do it this way just to to show you that you don't need to memorize a new equation. All right. So. My length and my height are both 3 and 3. My width and my height, 3 and 3. My length and my width, 3 and 3. Hmm. So basically, we're doing the same thing three times. And 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is 18, 18, 18. And I add them all together for my final surface area of 54, that should say inches, square inches. All right, 54 square inches. I'll cover it up. You can't see it now. Now, there is also this equation that you can use. If you want to use the equation for a cube, it would be 6 times the side squared. So instead of saying 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 plus 2, I should say plus 2, which is 6, we would put that 6 there. Instead of saying side times side, we'll say side squared. So it's exactly the same equation. It's a little bit more condensed. For using a cube, it's a little bit quicker to use this equation. But you don't need to memorize the second equation. You really don't. Um, I just want to point that out. You can use the rectangular prism equation, or you can use the cube equation when it's a cube. But there you have it. That's how you find the surface area of both rectangular prisms and cubes.